With a bright display, tight controls, and superior specs, the PlayStation Vita might be one of the best ways ever for playing RetroArch on the go. In this video, I'm going to show you all the steps you need to take to install RetroArch on your jailbroken PlayStation Vita, and it all starts right now. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Blaine, and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of your video game experiences. So if you like content about restorations, repairs, mods, product reviews, and other great video game content, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out. Here we go. If you haven't done the jailbreak on your PlayStation Vita yet, you'll need to in order to be able to install RetroArch. I have a complete video on how to get this done, and it's linked right here and in the description below. So if you haven't done it yet, make sure you go there first. You'll need to download the latest version of RetroArch for the PlayStation Vita from RetroArch.com. From the RetroArch homepage, click on the Downloads tab. Keep scrolling down until you see the version of RetroArch for PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV. They actually run the same operating system, so you can do this process on PlayStation Vita or the PlayStation TV. From here, just click the download link. The file you're downloading will be a native VPK or Vita package file, so you won't have to uncompress it. Before you connect your Vita to your computer to transfer over the RetroArch VPK file, now's a good time to start thinking about how you want to organize your ROM sets. So in your download folder, Create a new folder and name it ROMs. You'll be able to transfer this folder with your ROM sets and RetroArch.VPK over at the same time, which makes things go much quicker and much more efficiently. I keep a set of ROMs on this PC and use this PC specifically for demonstrating how to do these kinds of tasks on YouTube. So I keep a Super Nintendo set right here. I'm gonna copy the Super Nintendo set in its folder and then go right back to that ROMs folder I created in downloads right next to the RetroArch VPK and paste it right here. In just a moment, we'll transfer all of this stuff over to the Vita in one shot. SSD sure do make fast work of this task. Connect your Vita to your PC using Vita Shell. You can connect by USB or FTP, it doesn't matter. I'm using the USB method as you can see in the bottom right corner from Windows here. With your Vita mounted, go to Downloads and grab both the RetroArch.VPK file and your ROMs folder and copy them. Once you have them copied, go to the USB drive that mounted. In this case, it's USB Drive E. Here you'll see the contents of your Vita memory card. This is where you want to paste those two files. Right click in a space underneath the files and folders and select paste. The transfer process can take from several minutes to a half an hour or longer depending on how much content you're copying over. Just remember that this is slightly older and slower USB technology than some of the modern USB stuff that we use today. Once everything's copied over, go ahead and close out File Explorer and you can disconnect your PlayStation Vita from your PC as you've copied over everything you need at this point to get started. On your PlayStation Vita, with Vita Shell still open, you'll need to scroll down to UX0 to access the files you just copied over to your memory card. You'll see right on the root of UX0, your memory card, that you have now RetroArch.VPK and the ROMs folder. You'll need to run that Vita package file, the RetroArch.VPK, to install it. So scroll down to RetroArch.VPK and select it, and tell it yes at the prompt. You'll probably find that the install process will sit at 0% for an extended time before it starts moving. In fact, it sat on this install for about a minute and a half before the progress bar started to move. The entire install takes about five minutes. It paused temporarily at 40% as well, and then finished right up. Once the install's done, exit Vita Shell and go back to the main menu and you'll see the new RetroArch icon wiggling and waiting for you to tap it to start the process of playing RetroArch. So tap in and tap into the screen to start RetroArch for the first time. RetroArch does some basic setup and installs of files and folders that it needs in order to get the ball rolling for the first time. And what you'll see is this quick menu. 
Go back to the main menu. You'll need to load a core before you can play anything in RetroArch. Scroll down until you get to Load Core and select it. You'll need a core or emulator that matches the ROMs that you want to play. So in this instance, we'll need a Super Nintendo core. Super Nintendo is considered a model that's a subset of the Nintendo manufacturer, so it'll be under the N's. The most recent offering is dated 2010, so that's the one we'll use. It takes a moment to load up the core, and it'll go back to the main menu. You'll get a confirmation message in the bottom left corner, and it'll indicate that SNES 9X core is now loaded. You'll need to import content or your ROMs in order to be able to play them. So in the left navigation, go to Import Content. Now you get to see exactly why we put a ROMs folder right on the root of your memory card. You can just go to UX0, go to ROMs, and right inside there you'll see the ROMs folders you set up. For example, Super Nintendo. So go into your ROM folder with the ROMs that you want to use. Then select Scan This Directory. And it'll start scanning and recognizing each of the ROMs that you've put on the memory card. And you'll have to wait and wait and wait some more just be prepared that if you put an entire rom set on your memory card and you're scanning them for the first time it can take quite a while for this example it took close to an hour and the recorder even cut off at one point during the process just be patient hang in there and it'll do its thing once it's done go back to the main menu you'll be able to load your games now so go down to load content now go down to UX0, which is your memory card. Then go to the ROMs folder. And the folder containing the ROMs you're looking for, in this case, Super Nintendo. This time, instead of an empty directory, you'll see all of the ROMs that it found during the directory scan. Let's pick a beloved all-time favorite game to test with. In this case, Super Mario World. Select the game, pick Load Archive, and use Current Core to load the game. As the game starts up, you'll get some load messages in the bottom left corner. And there it is, Super Mario World, running on a PlayStation Vita. With excellent physical controls, and even an OLED display on the original PlayStation Vita model, this makes for an incredible retro game emulation experience. There are lots of great cores that you can use to play retro games and emulate them on your PlayStation Vita through RetroArch, so have fun going through the process of loading up your favorites. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on great original new content as it comes up, and check out these videos here for more ways to get the most out of your video games.